Over the past 12 months, we've seen the reports from BYD and Tesla. They make a profit selling electric cars, but well, almost nobody else does. In fact, legacy automakers put together make an average loss on every EV they sell of 6,000 US dollars. And this is the real reason why that they are, well, not that key on selling that many. I mean, have a look at Hyundai and Kia's EVs. They're really good, right? But their sales actually haven't grown now for a very long time. And this is the key reason. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Automakers are losing US$6,000 on every electric car they sell. That's an average across the industry for all legacy automakers. For the most part, automakers obviously are not meeting consumer expectations for EVs, say Boston Consulting Group, in terms of the actual production. Boston Consulting Group estimates that most automakers lose approximately US$6,000 on every EV they sell. I believe this could be understating things. Now, that's on an average sales price of US$50,000. But if we see the sales reports from, say, Ford, uh, Neo, they're losing closer to US$30,000 on every EV they sell. If original manufacturers, legacy automakers, can't make money in this next generation of EVs, something's going to have to change, said Andrew Lowe, a senior partner at Boston Consulting Group's automotive leadership team. Now, in China, automakers have said, you need to make 500,000 500, EVs a year minimum in order to actually start making a profit on EVs or to not make big losses. But, I mean, the truth is that most legacy automakers, they're just not making enough. So that's the key reason why they're still making big losses. Now, whether automakers have the stomach to keep investing until they get to the level of scale and efficiency, where they can actually make a profit, is a big question that yet isn't hasn't been answered by you know legacy automakers. Automakers differ in their approaches to EVs, of course, but most they've felt the um, effects of sales slowing down recently. Toyota will buy credits to meet emissions regulations rather than actually making EVs. So Toyota is gonna pay Tesla for their emissions credits rather than actually manufacturing more electric cars because they think, oh, you know, what's a better option? We'll just pay Tesla. And obviously this is gonna help Tesla to simply manu manufacture more EVs and eventually take market share from Toyota. But that's the challenge that automakers are facing right now. Do they go for short-term profits? or long-term vision. Ford, which less than two years ago said it wanted to eventually challenge Tesla in EV sales, along with General Motors as well, last cut production of its F-150 Lightning EV, and it actually halted shipments for apparently a battery issue. So Ford and General Motors both said that they would out potentially outsell Tesla in 2025, and then it was revised to 2026, and now they're just you know, now they're just keeping quiet about all those plans because they know that that's probably never going to happen. Nearly 40% of 3,000 US consumers surveyed by Boston Consulting in January said they'd intend to purchase an EV as their next vehicle. Uh, but they did say that there were some strict requirements about them buying an EV as their next car. Now, either way, 40% is a great number. I mean, 40% of Americans saying their next car will be electric means there's clearly a huge amount of interest in EVs in the United States. EV potential owners though, they want 20 minute charging, which is actually definitely possible, but they want a 350 mile range of driving. On average, just what people are saying they want, 350 miles of driving and a price of 50,000 US dollars. That's according to the survey, on average. Realistically, those requests are absolutely possible within the next few years. Only one EV model available today is fulfilling most consumers' checklists though, the firm told Automotive News. The Hyundai Ioniq 6 is the only EV that meets those standards. The Tesla Model 3, of course, is pretty close as well, but the Ioniq 6, well, it's not selling. I mean, sales of the Ioniq 6 have been a huge disappointment globally, and it's actually only selling a couple of hundred per month on average worldwide. It's really been a big failure for Hyundai. It shows you that the polarizing style is it's not appealing to buyers, but Hyundai are not making that many of them either. So that's probably part of the issue. 
EV intenders also want to be able to access a fast charger within 30 minutes, including the time it takes to drive there and wait for um, the time for the vehicle to charge. You know, the reality is that you know, only about 1% of charging would be done at a fast charger. You do 99% for the, for the average person, 99% of your charging would be done at home. Automakers have the technical know-how to fulfill the thresholds, in other words, to make cars, EVs with this much range at these prices. They can do it, but can they make a profit? That's part of the challenge. They're hard pressed to actually achieve that, right? Because a lot of automakers such as Dodge and Stellantis, and Toyota, they're using internal combustion engine vehicles to make EVs. So that makes them too heavy. And then they have to put a bigger battery pack in. So the efficiency, the efficiency comes down. The, pr the cost of production increases. So that's part of the challenge because these automakers are just sort of tipping their toe into the water. You know, not, not going really properly into manufacturing EVs. It means they cost more to manufacture and they are compromised. Partnerships across automakers and suppliers to split costs are critical for EV profitability, said Brian Colley, global leader for Boston Consulting Group's automotive and mobility practice. There's too much upfront investment and there's too much individual model risk for both vehicle manufacturers and suppliers to incur on their own, he said. Partnerships and joint ventures are the way to drive greater scale. So what's going on? Well, many automakers projected 70% EV sales growth for 2023, based on sales nearly doubling annually from 2022, from 2020 to 2022. So EV sales worldwide actually did double from 2020 to 2022. So automakers expected 70% growth in 2023. But of course, as with everything, uh, growth has to eventually slow down a bit. Inside EV sales, Instead, EV sales actually grew by 50% last year, which I think was a good result. Remember, automakers are saying that that was below their expectations. The dimmer reality paints a picture of weakening EV demand. But the thing is, the weakening of EV demand, that's because a lot of manufacturers are selling EVs at prices that are simply too high, or the product itself isn't good enough because they're just dipping their toe in the water, not making you know fully... Uh, ground up EVs, which are better products. This has obviously caused a lot of consternation among our OEM clients who are pumping billions of dollars into these next generation vehicles, said Boston Consulting Group. Automakers can close half of the cost gap, so they can reduce that cost gap between EVs versus internal combustion with effective technology choices, uh, cheaper batteries now, lithium ion phosphate battery packs would actually eliminate that cost gap between internal combustion and EVs. Um, higher energy density batteries as well can actually basically help to reduce the price, having a, being able to put a smaller battery pack in a car. They should also identify inefficiency efficiencies in EVs and internal combustion production, said Boston Consulting Group, in order to you know, fix some of these challenges. Even though with such improvements, they'd still lose around 3,000 US dollars on every $50,000 EV they sell in the United States, said Lowe. Now, this doesn't apply in China, where automakers are selling electric cars at incredibly low prices. In fact, often cheaper than internal combustion vehicles. And BMW themselves have actually said that it's actually becoming more expensive to manufacture engines and cheaper to manufacture EVs. So there is that change happening right now. Support from policymakers and continued advancement of public charging infrastructure can help narrow the gap, said Boston Consulting. Advancements in vehicle, battery and charging technology will accelerate production of EVs that are affordable for mainstream buyers and that are a better product as well. But the question is fundamentally, whether they're going to be able to make money selling EVs. Now, obviously consulting groups, they know Tesla makes a profit selling EVs. They know legacy automakers do not. There's a big gap there that legacy auto has to cross. EVs could make up 30% of US sales when next generation models launch within the next 12 to 18 months and are in full production, said Boston Consulting Group. But there are many reasons to believe this might not happen based on the fact that some of these automakers, General Motors and Ford, have slowed down or canceled their EV production sites, their next generation EV production sites. Automakers may delay EV launches if the vehicles are unprofitable and consumers may become more cautious as fluctuating prices make resale values uncertain. Those factors, among others, could put EV shares around 20% rather than 30%. But either way, basically Boston Consulting Group is saying 
that EV percentages in the US are gonna go from 8% today to 20% in less than a year and a half. They're saying they could even hit 30% in less than a year and a half. That is huge growth. In other words, Boston Consulting Group is actually factoring in for massive growth in EV sales over the next 18 months worldwide, but also in particular in the United States. Consumers who say they want to purchase an EV are most are more cost conscious than early adopters, and they prefer established brands uh, such as Toyota over new brands. And that's what people are comfortable with, right? They're comfortable with brands they already know. However, in China, that's not the case. Consumers are saying, you know what? The brands we already know, they're not making compelling EVs at prices that we think are reasonable or the EVs they're selling are just not good enough. Not all of the 38% of consumers who said they plan to purchase an EV will actually buy one, said Boston Consulting. Some EV intend intenders have unrealistic expectations. They want automakers to meet their very high standards, but they aren't willing to pay for it. Those that are looking for very high performance, very long range, ultra fast charging, should be willing to pay more for it, said Boston Consulting. While those looking for a cheaper vehicle would be willing to compromise on those features. So basically the takeaway is this, right? EV growth in the United States is dependent on manufacturers. Can Tesla bring out a $25,000 electric car that's good? I think they can. Uh, when will they do it? Well, I don't know, but I'm gonna guess probably 2026. That's when we're gonna see more sales growth. That's when we're gonna see more options in the market. We're gonna see cheaper prices. We're gonna see vehicles with longer range and faster charging. But Boston Consulting is saying, you know what, by 2026, EV sales will hit 20 to 30% in the United States. Well, they're already just hitting 50% in China. So EV sales worldwide are expected to increase at a very rapid pace in spite of a lot of automakers not really being willing to fully invest. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments and thanks for watching.